Welcome to the hottest grappling show in Arizona. The Valley is home to an amazing grappling community. Join us as we roll through the top jiu-jitsu schools in the state. Our goal, to highlight incredible instructors, their academies, and their amazing journeys through life and jiu-jitsu. It's not the destination, it's the journey that counts. Welcome to Rolling Through the Valley. rolling through the valley here we are at red hawk academy and with me is the man himself tim welch tim oh my gosh amazing to have you on the show um man this place is awesome how long have you been in this space um i've been in this specific space for about two years and it's like this old school mall that these brothers inherited from their dad and i found it just walking around and there's this die hard gym in here and it's a old school power lifting gym and uh it had a bunch of just empty suites around it so i just envisioned what could it be and now we have three of the suites for the gym and then we have the coffee shop in one of the suites and then one of my so other cool. students has a uh, the art of recovery which is cold plunges saunas and then one of my other students sells organic meals every day for ten dollars so it's really a one-stop shop and just the community of people is yeah. is really fun so this i feel is like lucky. the most unique school i've ever been to like you guys have it all and it's just like the vibe here is immaculate so i love it um, go ahead. I mean, that's such a, that's such a compliment because yeah. that, that's what I'm so thankful for. Everything's really cool, all the stuff we have, but really the community of people and just the competitiveness. It's still competitive, but it's still really fun and like mm -hmm. a family-oriented place. So I'm really, really proud of the community we're building. Well, we want to get to know you a little bit more. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into jiu-jitsu. Uh, well, I started wrestling and boxing when I was 14 years old. And then in Montana, it was illegal to fight until you're 18 years old, fight MMA. So the day I turned 18, I had my first MMA fight. Wow. I had 10 amateur fights. And then when I was 19, I turned professional and I was fighting most of my life. So I was still training jujitsu probably three times a week, but not full time until I met Takino when I was about 24 years old. And I started going over and training under Takino, doing his mm -hmm. program. And that's when I really fell in love with jujitsu and the gi and the actual sport. And uh, been under Takino for the last, I think, eight years now. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who really got me just motivated and passionate about the sport. That is super awesome. And you still compete? Uh, yeah, I was yeah. getting ready for Nogi Worlds last year, and uh, I completely tore my Achilles oh, tendon gosh. playing basketball. So oh. I, I think I'm about 16 weeks past that. And now I'm just healing up, trying to get back to 100%. Tell us what your game is like. What's like your favorite submission? Tell us a little bit about your style. I mean, I what do you teach to the students? Well, my style, mm -hmm. I kind of like to hang on the head. I like to wear people out, make them tired. And I really got a lot of my style from Taquino. He's really good guard passer, one of the best guard passers in the world. So once he gets on top, half guard, he's really good from there. And I do teach MMA too. So a lot of my jujitsu is really being on top, passing the guard, get, being in always a position where I can punch the person if I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but for my students, I really try to stick the, to the curriculum that Taquino and Bruno um, made the soul mm -hmm. fighters curriculum. I tried to stick with that because the, they're the absolute masters of the sport and they came together with a curriculum that you can teach day one athletes all the way to till they're really good. So that's probably probably more my style, more mm -hmm. of a on top, pass the guard. Mm -hmm. But really I think it's very important to be well rounded and, and be mm -hmm. proficient in the gi, have a good guard, um, be able to wrestle. Um, I, I think you should be good at everything. Would you say you're mostly a gi or no gi school or kind of both? Um, uh, there's probably a little bit more no gi now. Before mm -hmm. we would do a little bit more gi, but there's a lot of wrestlers that come in, a lot of people that their goals are to compete in ADCC. Mm -hmm. um, so we're a little bit more of a no gi school now. Jiu-Jitsu teaches a lot of life lessons. What does jiu-jitsu mean to you? 
Jiu-jitsu is just one of my favorite. I mean, it's the best sport in the world, I believe. Fighting is really, it's really hard. You're, there's a lot of egos in the, in the MMA room, a lot of egos. The guys are just wanting to be tough. A lot of guys are doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. But jiu-jitsu, you have everyday people, you have older people, you have a lot of women doing jiu-jitsu, and they're just doing it to get better, to push themselves, mm -hmm. put themselves in uncomfortable positions. And it does give them a community of people to be around that are all, all trying to improve and get better. So... It's really, for me, it's just the best sport in the world and I feel so lucky to be able to come here every day. How has it changed your life? Before, before I met Taquinho and all the Brazilians, I didn't really, I thought of jiu-jitsu like, oh yeah, you go on your back, you do some triangles, you do some arm bars and stuff. But just seeing how passionate those Brazilians were and they'll mm -hmm. sit there a whole practice Back in the day, we would do six, ten-minute rounds of comp training, and they would just sit there after and just discuss different techniques and different positions. They were very, very passionate about the sport, mm -hmm. and and that really made me fall in love with it. Fall in love with it, and really just think, think deeper about jujitsu, and really start understanding the points, and just really start understanding jujitsu more. And I think it's just so good for people that. I mean, if they have anxiety or, or, or they don't really have a passion, just learning jujitsu and giving them something to, to grow and build in. And then that, that turns into once you're training hard, you got to take care of yourself at home more. You have to stay hydrated. You have to eat healthy. You have to sleep better so you can train harder. So overall, it's just, it really can just change your life and improve your life a lot. Yeah, and this is what you do full time, right? Jujitsu is like your whole life. You're, in, you're an instructor here and you also have other things going on as well, right? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel, like I said, I feel so, so yeah. lu lucky. And uh, right now I'm doing a lot. Ever since I tore my Achilles, I wanted to focus a lot on my content. Mm -hmm. So I've been on YouTube quite a bit. I was doing it as a hobby for a while, but now it's turned into like a main source of income for Love me. That. So I have our podcast, my YouTube, my Snapchat, um, training Sean, and teaching my jujitsu students. It's amazing how jiu-jitsu does change your life and like the people you meet within the community, right? That's like everything. I've met the best people here and so I'm sure you can relate to that and having your students around, that that means everything, so. Yeah, I have so many people that are just experts in other areas mm -hmm. that train jiu-jitsu under me that I can ask for advice or that'll help me whenever I need it. We have just a, a, a team and we have a chiropractor, we have an AC guy, we have a plumber, we have mm -hmm. all these different guys that are such nice people yeah. in here training hard that I can also learn from too. Right. What are your thoughts on competition and do you think it's for everyone? I don't think competition's for everyone, but I do think people should sign up for a tournament mm -hmm. just at, at least one tournament just to feel the emotions that you have to deal with just to feel the build up and how how easy it is to overthink a match the week prior weeks prior and especially the day of i think it's good for everyone to feel that pressure and then to feel the pace of a real jujitsu match because it's going to be close to a pace of a real street fight mm -hmm. so if you want to get better at self-defense and, and learn it Signing up for a competition is a, a good idea because then you feel the pace of a match. You feel mm -hmm. how actually tired you're going to get. Um, you feel the pressure from your students and your family watch, watching. And if you can still stick to your techniques and focus on what you're doing, it's going to improve your jujitsu a lot faster than not competing, I believe. Absolutely. It's amazing. Like, as soon as a person steps into a competition, it's like they come back to the gym and they have like a superpower. Like, it automatically does change your game and your mindset i feel like you uh, know yeah yeah for sure and some people i've some of my proudest things are some of my students that started day one with me and signed up for two three tournaments and never won a match would just get submitted in the first minute because of because because of pressure because of uh, pressure and they would be um just so nervous and scared and they free freeze up but now just slowly working on them, slowly working with their um, their mental strength and how to counter those thoughts and how to be more in the present moment and more trust your jujitsu mm -hmm. and seeing them thrive now compared to where they were before it just makes me feel so good. All right, so tell us how your first competition experience was. My first competition experience, well, I fought MMA. So I fought, I've had 10 amateur fights and I've had, I think, 25 professional fights. And in those fights, there's a lot of pressure on you because you can get 
severely injured. There's a lot of money on the line. If you lose, you only get half the amount of money you'll make if you win. So for me, when it comes to jujitsu, jujitsu is way less pressure. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not worrying about the money, making the money, and I'm not really worried about getting knocked unconscious or my jaw getting broke or me tearing my bicep. So jujitsu for me, it's really easy for me to stay present in the moment, stay focused on my jujitsu. Um, yeah, because it's quite a bit different than MMA. What is your competition mindset and what do you share with your students? Competition mindset, especially at my academy, it's like you, you just got to show up, trust your jiu-jitsu and give your best effort mm -hmm. because it's not about just the competition day. It's the weeks prior and the process getting ready for that tournament. What did you do the last five weeks? What did you do the last six weeks? Because if you're slacking off in practice, you're avoiding tough mm -hmm. rounds in practice. You're not going to feel confident, right? You're going to mm -hmm. show up to that tournament and you're going to be, once things get tough and you get put in a bad position, you'll probably crumple. So making sure you're putting yourselves in bad positions and you're really exhausting yourself mm -hmm. in practice. Then when you show up competition day, it doesn't matter. Go out there, try your best, trust your jujitsu, whatever happens, happens, and we'll get better from it. What is one of the biggest lessons competitions have taught you? Uh, the, probably the biggest lessons that competitions taught me is when you lose, it, it usually, it can do two things. It can demoralize you mm -hmm. and it make you not want to be scared to do it, not want to do it again, or it can really motivate you. Say, I got submitted with an armbar. Um, I'm going to go back to practice. I'm never going to get submitted with an armbar again. I'm going to put myself in so many armbars and I'm going to escape them and escape them, escape them. Um, so losing a competition usually is going to up your game depending on your mindset. Winning a competition, you're probably going to do the same things you've been doing. What advice would you give your younger self if you could go back in time? If I could go back in time and give my younger self some advice, I would say just keep going, just keep going because there's been times in my life that I feel like my dreams have just been shattered from injuries, yeah. back to back injuries and I didn't really know where I was going. At first my plan was like, I'm going to make it to the UFC, that was my main focus for so many years and these injuries were kind of hindering me but they put me on another path that's mm -hmm. even better than if I would have gotten the UFC and I wouldn't be where I'm at now if those things would have went right. So I, if I had to go back and tell my younger self something, I would just say keep going, stay positive, and mm -hmm. just just roll with it. Yeah, especially those people that quit early. It's like if you just would have stayed with it, because we all had thoughts about that, you know? And it's the ones that stick with it realize, like, man, I'm so glad I'm still doing this, you know? Yeah, some people just hate getting beat up. They hate getting tired. But everyone in jiu-jitsu, you have to go through it. There's When you sign up... There's not just, oh, he's a natural. Mm -hmm. he's, st he's staying up there with brown belts or black belts or purple belts. It's hard You're work. gonna get beat yeah. up. You're gonna be the nail. Mm -hmm. And just accept that. And within a year, new people are gonna come in and then you're gonna start really seeing your growth. Yeah. Where do you see jujitsu evolving or growing into? I think so. jujitsu is just gonna keep growing and growing, especially in America. I can definitely see it becoming a school sport just like high school wrestling, they have college wrestling. I can definitely see it one day going into high schools and going into colleges, just because mm -hmm. the biggest influencers in the world, they talk about it. Right. Uh, Joe Rogan, he talks about it so much and the benefits, and the benefits are, I mean, crazy in jiu-jitsu. So I just see it getting into schools and becoming more of a mainstream sport, but probably realistically, it's gonna be a lot more no-gi, just because we're in America and mm -hmm. high schools have wrestling, colleges have wrestling, so people tend to wanna to be no-gi more here in mm -hmm. America. What are your goals in jiu-jitsu? My goals in jiu-jitsu are always changing. Like I really would love to win, win the West Coast or East Coast trials. I would love to get a no-gi title under my belt. Probably it'd be Masters nice. 1 no-gi title. Um, I would love to do that. That's one of my main goals. But right now, it really, when I get injured getting ready for tournaments, it really bums me out because I can't roll with my students. Mm. And I can't make my students get better. Yeah. I, rolling with Taquino, every time I rolled with him for the, for the eight years we've been together, every time I roll with him, he tells me a little tip after mm -hmm. and how to beat me. And mm -hmm. my jiu-jitsu would be nowhere where it's at without him. Mm -hmm. So I really want to give that back to my students and roll with my students over competing and getting yeah. these titles. I'd rather be able to roll with my students consistently and make them stronger. What are like, what's going on here at um, Red Hawk Academy? Are there any big plans? Like, what do you look forward to for the gym? Yeah, right now at my gym, it's, I'm in that weird phase where it's like, how big do I really want to be? And when I sit down and think about it, I never want to be a corporate gym where I have thousands of members and I don't know anyone's oh, no. name. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm really thinking about my mind if I'm going to cut off the memberships around 300, maybe even 400 memberships and keep them at that. When they open up, people can sign up. But I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to keep it how it is. Just when you mm -hmm. come in, it's really fun. It's not this corporate corporate yeah. money-making machine that I see a lot of jiu-jitsu academies turn into. When you yeah. roll in, you got to buy their $300 gi, you have to have to buy their rash guard, you have to buy just like all that stuff. I'd rather do it for people. A lot of young people don't have a ton of money laying around. Mm -hmm. So if they come in, they really want to get going. I don't want to make it so crazy expensive like a lot of these jiu-jitsu schools are doing. How can we find out about you and your academy? Where do we go on social media? Um, the gym Instagram is Red Hawk Academy AZ and Red Hawk Academy AZ.com is the website and you can get all the info on there. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. You're this welcome. was so awesome. So awesome having you on the show. So glad you got to come in and try the coffee. I'm glad you like it. Best coffee ever. Not too sweet, just right. Sweet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Good cool. talking to you. Thanks.